Hello, and welcome to Refuse. As always, I'm Plume Noir, and here we have Goddess Mode number three. You know, I finally figured it out. <laughs> I figured out what is the deal, what this has been reminding me of. Not the whole book itself, but the garish colors. You see, back in the 90s, Valiant Comics did this thing. It was called Valiant Vision. And basically, basically it was like these almost like 3D glasses type thing. And um, what it was is it was based on the coloring of the comics, where I believe reds popped out and it made the greens and blues kind of fall back. Kind of like a simulated 3D effect. And, um, you know, I had it and I think there were some of the comics like Solar did it. And, um, yeah, I, I, I tried it, but, you know, my... I can't see reds that very well, and my color blindness, it didn't work for me. It just looked bad. And the problem was, if you didn't have the glasses, I imagine even if you did have the glasses, the books look like trash. It just looked pretty garish. That's why I don't think too many people remember uh, the Valiant Vision, you know, uh, starter pack gimmick thing. Uh, I wonder if I still have, I think I might even have one that was unopened with the glasses should try and find that and see what that would look like if I put it over the camera or whatever. Um, but anyway, uh, that's, uh, this is ugly. This is so ugly that you can't quite tell what is going on. You know, it almost looks like a city in the background, what these fingers are supposed to be. You know, it kind of looks like skyscrapers. And like a demonic building here, and you can kind of make out the one here. And if you look really closely, you know, the multicolored hair, you can see Zoe Quinn's character. And it, this is, and then the monster hands. This is garbage. This is ugly. And I love this quote powerful and empowering. There is nothing like goddess mode on the shelf right now. Is that a compliment? Because let me tell you something, I am thankful that there is nothing else like Goddess Mode on the comics racks right now. If you think comic shops, if you think the comics industry is going down now, imagine a poor comic shop that has to uh, stock an entire rack full of just Goddess Mode. Oh, and comics like, oh, this is, gah. So anyway, we'll pop in here. And at the end of the last issue, you know what? Besides Cassandra, I've already forgotten all the other characters' names. Uh, there's the Hollywood famous chick, not her, but the one that's been eaten up here. At the end of the previous issue, she's the one that's kind of gathering all the other oracles. And um, yeah, she ends up getting getting e eaten by this demon. And uh, uh, God, just look at how ugly all this is. And again, that line here. Makes it look like uh, Cassandra, the Zoe Quinn character, is always drooling. <laughs> so, yeah, of course, you know, here we have them, um, you know, spit her out. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't run off and get horribly killed, too, uh, Cassandra. I can't shield all of you. Of course, she's panicking. That's all she does is breaks down and panics. You know, uh, I don't know how to use my powers. I don't know how to fight demons. I don't even know how to throw a punch. And, you know, you said we'd save each other, but I can't even save myself. And uh, so she yells at the things, uh, why stick your demons on us at all? Was I more threatening as a code janitor? What did I do to deserve that? What did any of us ever do? And uh, they say that uh, you believe a demon must be told to feed? They are cruelty incarnate, born of the darkest impulses sleeping in human hearts, driven by a lone instinct to cause suffering and increase their strength. You know what? I think I was in 10th grade and I wrote something very similar um, in a notebook pad. I think with some mega death lyrics too, to be honest. And yeah, this panel actually took me a minute to figure out what exactly I was looking at. You know, after a moment, I realized this is the the one that had been eaten, the, the the one in white. Here, we're inside the demon's mouth. Here's its teeth. And this took me quite a while to figure out exactly what this splat is. Now, it's the wrestler woman punching her way in to rescue. As you can see, they get the hole out here. And, uh, yeah, um, it just eats away at you. Whether devoured whole or in pieces, it matters not. 
the hunt ended the moment they caught your scent. If you want to delay the inevitable, focus on the monsters trying to kill you before distracting yourself with the ones who are not, lest you make the same mistakes as she did. Yeah, stupid. So yeah, it was this Etogony, whatever her name is. Oh, in this this page, the layout, Robbie Rodriguez is such a crap artist. Um, the layout of this page, when I read this at first, because the floating panels, especially on the top, the previous page had a little bit of this as well. You know, where it almost looks like, you know, because of the crease, it's one panel going across. Uh, but in this one, it looks almost like it should be read this way. But it's not still singular pages. And uh, so, <laughs> uh, do not insult me, child. You pose no threat to my demons. What chance do you think you have against a real monster? And apparently Zippo still work in cyberspace because the wrestler woman says, Nah, I've seen Strong, and she was a lot cuter than you. You're just a dumb bitch in a hat. Wow, Zoe got paid to write that line. Huh. <laughs> so it just gets dumber. She's just crying throughout this whole thing. You know, this is all my fault. Stop, stop, stop the world. And then something happens. You know, get the more pseudo intellectual uh, crap. And yeah, remember, she's the oracle of garbage. So she pulls this out of her ass. Well, maybe not literally. Looks like she's probably reaching underneath her to summon it, but you know, she pulls out this weapon that we've seen her on the cover. And that's when the Psyche, you know, basically these AI helper, you know, basically this world's version, the cyber world's version of Alexa. Um, you have transmuted your will into the, the key to your domain. You know, Psyche, couldn't you be telling them stuff like this sooner? You know, or maybe people are just not asking the right questions. Uh, as the Oracle of Garbage, your domain's magic deals with reclaiming power from hopeless and otherwise lost causes. You know, I was kind of thinking maybe a recycling thing, but reclaiming power from hopeless and otherwise lost causes. That's Zoe Quinn's power. I'm sorry, that's Cassandra's power. She just happens to be pretty much Zoe Quinn. And, uh, Psyche, are you serious? That's all I've ever wanted. Really? That was, that was your goal? So, what can I do with this? Do I just bonk stuff? Presently, your key is displaying the remaining duration of Stop the World. <sighs> so, basically, it, she... She basically dropped into the command line and she ran stoptheworld.exe. When the globe is empty, the objects halted during Stop the World will return to normal time. Until then, if you touch your key to an object, it will be brought to the analog once time resumes. Pretty convenient, isn't it? Uh, objects that possess an analog-compatible format, such as oracles, will be fully restored upon arrival. Yeah, we got a reset button. I, I can save them if you hurry. So she starts tapping people, and uh, what happens if I bonk a demon with this? Unknown. Oracle powers are unpredictable, even to me. Why don't you go? Ahead, why don't you try it and find out? Now, remember, there's a whole big magic with the cyber world thing. Is Cassandra just being used? by these creatures. That's why they haven't really exactly killed her when they could have. Because with this power, she could actually unleash unleash the demons into the real world. And that's why Psyche is tempting her. You're the worst Navi ever. You know, tempting her to use it on a demon to really, you know, unleash them into the real world. Hard pass. I made a big enough a mess as it is. So, yeah, she's, uh, wait, where are we going to appear in the, appear in the analog world? Unknown. So yeah, once time starts back up, everyone disappears, you know, from the cyber world, gets transported back to the real world, aka the analog world, and coincidentally, they end up in Cassandra's apartment. You know, what is this thing? They all ended up in uh, a toilet stall in the sad dad bar last time. 
which she had Zoe Quinn's father issues. Um, it was it was just all appearing in confined spaces. I, I I don't get that, but I have a feeling that's uh, some type of little fetish she has or something. Uh, it was a kiss. She saved the day. I thought we were goners when you tried to throw the world's worst sucker punch. But, yeah. Uh, so she gets yelled at. Cassandra, are you trying to take her on? Do you have a death wish? Oh, no. I really did do that. Uh, you just forgot. You just did it. So her roommate comes out of the bathroom just in time for uh, uh, Cassandra to start throwing up. And uh, you know, Cass has friends now. Oh no, we're Wendigos who eat the flesh of dorks who ask too many questions. <laughs> what? So yeah, you're a bitch, but you still ask for his number anyway. Well, give him your number anyway. You might not be an oracle, but you're cool anyway. And she was the one, didn't we see her have like a threesome when they were being called? Oh yeah, and then there's this little thing where he just bumps his head for no reason. What, on the kettle? Aw, uh, it has nothing to do with what's going on. Uh... Well, it sounds, you two head up to the sad dad. We'll catch up. Look, this is my fault. I should have protected her instead of fighting that demon. I'll look after her. Then head bonk? Uh, what? Uh, what? What is going on there? So then we have this little touching moment where uh, Cassandra and the wrestler woman uh, compare, you know, their little bit of exposition. You know, she has a, a wife and kids. Of course, lesbian relationship. Hey, no problem. Um... And, you know, uh, Cassandra is trying to live up to her dad. And so, yeah, here's their problems. And um, so they decide they're going to... This part is so dumb. This is so stupid. Uh, um, let's debrief them and get back to living. Because that's the whole thing. You can't do this all the time. You need to live. I, what? Uh, um, uh, thanks, Farrah. That's the black girl's name. You have cab fare, right? Oh, yeah. What are they going to do? Piggyback ride. Yeah, that's what she's doing. She's just giving her a piggyback ride back to the bar. Oh, okay. Any chance we can go a little faster? Bitch, she's already given you a piggyback ride. Uh, you know, you should sit back and enjoy the branded content. The content is not as enjoyable once you piss off the tech dick Illuminati. And yeah, you see all the error signs, and during all this, uh, her boss is trying to contact her. She's ignoring the emails until finally she gets forced into a telepresence session. And there's a lot of stupid lines here, you know. Um, you know, rah, rah, you know, so never let the fight change who she was. Uh, even when it sucked ass, that's, uh, that became how she fought back. Screw wearing your heart on your sleeve, she wore it on her fist. That's why you gotta have a life outside of the fight. Magic doesn't come from the BS you've been through. It comes from holding your heart together when the world try keeps trying to break it. So it's tech magic. Uh, uh, hex wise. So, the back of the sad dad, she gets brought in. Um, of course, no calm. So they have the bodyguard. They kind of turn them off, zap them. And uh, <laughs> so... Uh, she finds out, the, the, the blonde-haired woman in white finds out who is basically contacted uh, Cassandra into a telepresence. It's the, the most powerful man in the world. Yeah, you remember this guy, you know, Paris Reynolds? Yeah. So she gets called in, basically thrown under the bus. You know, um, we have a deal, Miss Price. Prove your worth, keep your job, avoid your superiors was not part of the arrangement. If we had not had two massive psyche failures in the last 48 hours, and then this uh, Reynolds guy, uh, that's why you had me use executive privilege to force her into telepresence? You hired her the day she broke into your stuff. What did you expect? Disruptors disrupt, Clive. Again, no, we've had no real explanation of what a disruptor is. Uh, is that a, a term? You know, just kind of like, you know... Troll, you know, people are trolls, trolls, troll, disruptors disrupt. Is uh, is it a skill set? Who knows what it is? It's in her personnel file and her blood. You know, Raymond Price redefined, blah, blah, blah. Fire her. I admire her. Let's pivot. 
let's ha let her have her dad's job instead. It's like, so basically he's the acting head of the company because the real head's in a coma as well. And, uh, you know, Tucker isn't here. Uh, if you wanted to run the company in his absence, you should have outperformed a miscreant like me. Then we get this face. Oh, the, so, it's like Steven Universe's grunge uncle had a seizure. Um, speak of performances, I'm about to be late to my own gala, which he's going to be meeting with uh, the woman in white, whatever her name is, I've already forgotten, and I don't care. Uh, Cassandra, show me you're really your father's daughter. Choose excellence. Clive, do your job. And then he sighs. Shall we begin the onboarding process? That depends. Did you know about the demon when you sent me on that job, or did you ruin my life by accident? And his eyes kind of blip out again, kind of like her roommate Bill's. And it looks like he just kind of reset for a second. Sigh, shall we begin the onboarding process? Yeah, and then it continues on. So she got promoted. This book is stupid. You know, for someone who is the oracle of garbage, she's been promoted twice. And, you know... It, if they're trying to build this conspiracy of the magic that underlies the tech cyber world they live in, this book is a mess. I'm a big fan. You know, I, I always say consistency. You know, have characters act the way they should. Don't have them act wildly out of character. Don't, if you have magic, you know, even though magic can be kind of wild, uh, you know, don't have magic be able to do one thing and not in another. You know, you got to keep some rules consistent. And there's really no consistency in this book. I have no idea what the hell is going on. Um, you know, as I mentioned, in all the way back to the first uh, uh, video, this seemed like a dot hack, and it still does. There's a lot of similarities to dot hack in here. Um, but, yeah, the, the real world versus... You know, the cyber world been done. You know, have a magic under thing. What, how do these people use their powers? How do they use their abilities? Um, you know, Psyche just happens to tell her at the last moment. You know, no one thinks to ask anything beforehand. What is going on? Now, I will say this is not as wordy as the uh, past few issues. It seems like there might have been some restraint on all the just pure exposition but what we get is just uh garbage and um pep talks These pages are kind of i don't know what paper they're using on this um but yeah during this whole scene when uh you know she's be piggyback rides look what kind of child zoe quinn is a woman child with father issues <laughs> And that's what I'm getting out of this book. She needs therapy. And this book is... Ah! Uh, uh, it's three issues. It feels long. I, I keep thinking this is issue four. It's only been the third issue. What is going on? This book is garbage. But, of course, what do we expect from people like Zoe Quinn and Robbie Rodriguez? Wasn't he going blind? I thought I read that because the shirt looks like he is. Uh, ah! I, I came this close to dropping an F-bomb just now. Just this close to dropping an F-bomb. This book is garbage. And it's, you know, I'm trying not to be all, oh, outrageous, oh, garbage. No, this book is dumb. It doesn't make much sense. It's not consistent. How do things work? Um, now, I understand she's new. You know, this is new. As a reader, we're learning more. But the people that she's with, the other oracles, half the time don't seem to like her, but then they're all about sisterhood. Which is it? What is going, what is going on in Zoe Quinn's head? And look at, look at that. That always looks, that, that stupid little chin tattoo always looks like she's drooling. Just, I think I mentioned that before. This book is dumb. It's garbage. It's vertigo. Current vertigo is garbage. Eh, American Carnage isn't bad. But yeah, most of the books, I mean, even Border Talent's been canceled. I, I'm surprised Zoe Quinn's been able to keep up uh, a schedule of doing a monthly book. I wonder how long until she gets bored and the book just silently gets canceled. Uh, anyway, this book is garbage. Uh, five o'clock. Again, this is another book. After reading it, you know, going through it and all the 
colors and that. I literally have a headache. It's it's hard on the eyes. It's hard on the mind. It's hard on the soul. Avoid just avoid this book. Five o'clock. I keep doing this wrong. I need to really nail down my own rules and consistency. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. I would give it a, I would give it a six, but I think this book can get worse. <laughs> I don't want to just bottom out because that would say this book can go up, but I I think this book can still keep going down. Anyway, that's twenty minutes of my life. I'm if you've watched this all the way through, I'm sorry. Just be thankful you didn't buy this book. I hope you didn't buy this book. Don't buy this book. Don't reward bad behavior. <sighs> Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow. I have to work late tomorrow. Um, I, I might do a lab video. I'm not sure yet. If not, I might do a video really, really late. So tomorrow's uh, one of my late nights at work. So um, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. It's, you know, it looks like it says Goose Eat Mode. Is that just me? Goose Eat Mode. That's a better title, actually. I'd buy Goose Eat Mode. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.